Yeah, but it's still not a good comic. Howdy, I'm Kurt Williams, and today we're looking at issue one of Void Rivals by Robert Kirkman and Lorenzo De Felici. So I know I'm late to the game with this one. This came out like six months ago or something like that. So obviously there are going to be spoilers, okay? There's going to be spoilers in this video. Really, the only big spoiler here is that this was the start of the Energon universe, which includes the Transformers and G.I. Joe, which is pretty cool, I guess. Like I've said about the other issues of like Transformers and Cobra Commander, I don't have any experience with these franchises. So I'm not sure if Void Rivals had its own franchise before, but the way this issue was written, I would not be surprised if they've never showed up anywhere else. Because yeah, this comic has a Transformer, but what it doesn't have is any depth. So here's the skinny. Void Arrivals is about these two characters, Derek and Salila, who come from these two warring cultures who each take up one half of this giant ring that orbits a black hole, and each of them have been sent out to collect valuable resources for their respective side, but the mission didn't go well, and now they're crash-landed on some planetoid, and they have to figure out how to survive together. Now, as is usually the case in war, each side has made a up vicious lies about the other side so that they can promote hatred of the other team and, you know, motivate citizens to win the war. And in the first issue, when they realize that they're stuck on this planetoid whatever together, they of course try to kill each other at first, but then they begrudgingly work together so they can maybe survive and eventually they share their names with each other and eventually they take off their helmets to reveal that they're really not that different and ooh, we were all so surprised. And you might be thinking, well, that's not so bad. Why is he so upset about it? It's because it was so obvious from the get-go that by the time we had that big reveal, I just thought, yeah, I know. Move on. Let's just run through all the things they said about each other in this issue. Just so we're on the same page, Derek is an Agorian and Salila is a Zertonian. So Derek says, would your kind spare my life? And Salila says, probably not. And then Derek says, an honest Zertonian. What are the odds of that? So now we know Agorians think that Zertonians always lie. And then when their ship blows up later, she says that she has no wish to die with an Agorian. And then right before they take off their helmet, she says, I don't know if I'll be able to work with you after seeing your hideous Agorian face. And then he he says, I'd rather look at your misshapen Zertonian face than die. So each race thinks that the other race is hideous and untrustworthy at the very least. And the more we lean into the idea of each race hating the other one because they could never get along, we're just so different, the more obvious it becomes that they're just gonna find out that they are the same. Oh wow, it's so shocking to find common ground with somebody who's not exactly like me. The part that really made it obvious that they are the same race is when they're trying to build the ship together and she says, it's alarming how how little modification is required for your Agorian parts to work in my Zertonian ship. Oh yeah, that's a real head scratcher, isn't it? <laughs> so the point to all of that is that I am way beyond over what looks like is gonna be the entire point of this series. And even if that wasn't enough to make me bored of the series, the dialogue in the first three issues, because those are the only issues I have so far, but the dialogue in the first three issues is so boring. There's something to be said for the main character of a comic being like an everyman that everyone can see themselves in, but this character, Derek, is not just normal. He is unremarkable. He is such a boring, blank slate character with nothing interesting going on. If you asked me to describe the character of Derek, I would say, I mean, he's a, a guy. I guess. At least Salila is like standoffish and a little aggressive. She has at least a little bit of personality to her. And not only is the dialogue boring, but it's also stale and stiff. Like the first time we hear Derek speak, he says, what? Where? Oh, the crash must have knocked me out. After all that, please call me Derek. I know that's not how you pronounce his name, by the way. I just think it's funnier that way. For that one word bubble to have all of that information all at once when he's in this one pose, it's just too much. There should be transitions between these thoughts and there's no transition. It's just, where am I? Oh, I crashed. Call me Derek. It is thankfully followed up with his like artificial intelligence glove saying, protocol states I avoid addressing you by name as to not encourage familiarity or risk forming a bond. Which when I read that, I was like, oh, cool. It's acknowledging that cute droids are usually what people care about the most and it's subverting that expectation right out of the gate. But then we're barely halfway through the issue and the glove calls him friend. And there's no good reason for the glove to suddenly have changed its mind. It doesn't have a montage of them growing to know each other. Derek doesn't ever argue against that protocol. It just suddenly happens happens that the glove has changed its mind and now they're friends. So it's like, why did you even have the glove say that if you knew it was just gonna change its mind all willy-nilly later anyway? And then some more stiff dialogue. There's this transition from the end of one page where Derek just saved Salila 
from an explosion, and then she says, get off me, and then she puts out the fire on his jacket. And then it goes from her saying, stop moving, you're on fire, to the very next panel, she's not even in the panel, and she's saying, my name is Salila. That is such a monumentally jarring transition. She went from a hundred and super angry to zero, and now she wants to be friends. In two panels, and one of those panels wasn't even her just, like, considering how she feels about the situation. If there were panels where it just showed her thinking about things and feeling a certain way and we could see the thoughts in her brain and then she had changed her mind, it would be fine. But these gross, jarring transitions just make me not believe in the characters at all. And it's so inconsistent. One moment she wants nothing to do with him, another moment she's sharing her name, and then she's saying she doesn't want to die with him, and then she's excited to show him the Transformer she found. She's just all over the place. There's no consistency! I don't even want to get into issues two and three because they were just more of the same charmless, rigid, inconsistent storytelling. I'll be fair, there were a couple things I liked. Like these first couple pages where the glove is dragging Derek around trying to save his life, and he manages to drag him all the way over to the med pack and presses a button, and then whatever it is that you use to administer the medicine pops out and flies away, and he has to crawl all the way over to that. That was funny. I really enjoyed that. I thought it was a great foot to start on. But then as soon as Derek opens his stupid, boring mouth, I was done. I also liked the part with Jetfire. I think he was the only good character who is consistent in the whole issue. And he's looking at microscopic fungal growth and wind erosion and stuff, so he actually knows things. He has something interesting to say. And then before they can ask him for a ride, he just turns into a rocket ship and pieces out. And Derek and Salila are just left there like, Wah! That was a good moment. I did enjoy that part. But overall, the writing in this issue was just so, so, so much worse than Transformers. Now, I've got nothing but respect for Robert Kirkman. That guy makes comic books like he's trying to use up all the paper in the world. Real tree killer, that Robert Kirkman. And he writes really good stuff, too. Walking Dead is huge, and Invincible is huge, and I really enjoyed Oblivion Song. But this just felt like he was phoning it in or something. It is definitely not his best work. And three issues into the series, I can't say that I'm any more interested in what's going on. It just doesn't ever get interesting. Switching gears to Lorenzo De Felici, who did the art, there are some moments where I'm impressed. Like this first page where we see Derek's crash-landed rocket ship and we got all the terrain with all the cool textures and the smoke coming off the rocket ship. I think this looks pretty cool. And the terrain in the rocket ship on this big splash page is also really cool. I love the details on the rocket. Like, you can see it dripping. You can see all the smoking with the charcoal textures. There's a lot of detail on there. It's just a really nice image. But honestly, it's kind of ruined by this overly simplistic, pretty sketchy looking figure work he has. Salila in particular looks like he drew it at this exact size. Normally when you draw a comic, you blow it up and draw it a lot bigger than it's going to be printed so that you can get a lot more detail in there and you don't have to draw such teeny tiny stuff. But this is like a doodle that could have been done at this exact size and it still could look more detailed than this. Look at this figure work. That's the most static pose ever. They're not conveying any emotion. Not to mention Derek's helmet is inconsistent with the way it's drawn in every other panel. And honestly, I thought I would never say this, but this double page splash would be better even if it had been done by John Romita Jr. And he's like bottom of the barrel for me. But here's the thing, Lorenzo De Felici's art in Oblivion Song is actually pretty good. I like this art a lot. There's a lot of form to it, a lot of depth, the line weights are varied, it feels like the panels actually have dimension to them. Maybe the main difference is the colors. Who did the colors in Void Rivals? Mateus Lopez? Yep, these are some flat, boring colors. So I was totally unimpressed with Void Rivals. I loved Transformers. Cobra Commander was okay, and I have Duke, but I haven't read it yet. I get that it was exciting when this came out because we see the Transformer sharing a universe with other characters and that's cool but I do not expect this series to carry any weight of the franchise which is surprising because it's Robert Kirkman's book and he's usually great so I'm gonna give Void Rivals as a whole but mostly just issue one like a 5 out of 10. Yeah, there were some moments that I enjoyed, there were some times when I laughed, some parts I actually enjoyed myself for sure. But it was so heavily overshadowed by just being bored and not caring about the characters, not being invested in the characters, the feeling that the art could have been done so much better and conveyed so much more information. You know, the more a writer can rely on the artist to convey information, the more they can back up and just give you moments for the artist to really show you how things are going. But I don't feel like there was any trust coming from Kirkman for Lorenzo De Felici to show 
moments, so he had to tell us all the moments, and then because he was telling us all the moments, it just felt rigid and boring and obvious. Anyway, I'll stop complaining now. Maybe you liked it, and if you did like it, I would love to know why you liked it. I got issue one in its sixth printing, so obviously somebody is enjoying it. And it's not the worst thing I've ever read, and maybe I've got higher expectations for Kirkman than I do for the usual writer, but man, all that hype and that's all that is? Lame. Anyway, next video I make is gonna be about a comic I think is good to balance this out. Did you read it? What do you think?